How much are animals worth? Assigning a value to livestock is a normal part of everyday business. But what about bats? Mexican free-tail bats. How much are they worth? Next thing up for bids will be a Mexico free-tail bats. We'll start them off for eight million. Now eight, now nine, 11, 12. 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 30 on the big one, buddy. Now 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 560, 570, 80, 590, give me a billion dollars. You give me a billion, sir. Thank you. A billion dollars. I sold the bats for a billion dollars right over here. Each spring, millions of Mexican free tailed bats migrate to central Texas from Mexico. Could these bats really be worth a billion dollars? That's the goal of this particular project, is to really put a dollar value on a bat. What do animals, what do plants uh, provide for uh, the benefit of mankind? And the services that these bats provide is obviously consumption of insects, but it goes beyond that because these insects also feed on agricultural products, on agricultural crops, which in turn uh, reduce the productivity of agriculture. Knowing the numbers of bats helps us to understand uh, the impact that these have on an important a part of our economy. Accurately counting the bats has defied scientists for decades. Nobody has really uh, been successful in trying to estimate how many are in these caves. We're standing here at Bracken Cave. Uh, there have been estimates of somewhere in, uh, between 20 to 30 million bats in this cave, but that's kind of a a big guess, you know, you kind of wet your finger and hold it up, and yeah, that's about how many there are. So the technology now exists with the advent of this advanced thermal imaging, uh, also enormous computer power which it takes to do this. So we're really linking two really advances in technology. The tower provides a clean background for the thermal camera. The camera records the body heat of the bats. The computer counts each bat as it passes through the frame. This current research owes its roots to an earlier advancement in technology, but how it related to bats came as a complete surprise. In 1995, the National Weather Service deployed Doppler radar in central Texas. Each night during that summer, the radar screens exploded with readings that should indicate thunderstorms. The only problem was the skies were clear. These readings also emanated from the locations of known bat caves, showing that each night South Central Texas was blanketed by millions of hungry bats. That got the attention of two scientists. Dr. John Westbrook, and Dr. Gary McCracken. The balloon's going up so we can uh, put some uh, weather equipment up there to measure temperature, humidity, and pressure, and also to track the uh, balloon with its uh, attached equipment, which can listen in on the bat echo locations when they're feeding on insects at high altitudes. And we'll be tracking this balloon with an instrumented van. Bats tell you what they're doing with their vocalizations. And we can tell by the way the bats echolocate, by the sequence of calls that the bats emit, um, whether or not a bat is looking for insects, um, or in fact, if they're actually eating the insects. Three, three feeding buzzes. Classic, just absolutely perfect, classic bat calls. On the average, the bats feed from ground level to 3,000 feet, but some go as high as 10,000 feet. But what insects were the bats feeding on at such high altitudes? 
a student of mine is coming in and catching bats as they return to the cave after feeding and collecting their, collecting their poop, collecting their feces, and then looking through the feces, it's not all that bad actually, looking through the feces, and, and he can tell by looking at the remains, the insect parts that remain in the feces, what the bats are eating, at least the major types of insects that they're eating. And what he's finding is that when there are lots of moss, corn earworm moss migrating up through this region, all of a sudden the bat's diet increases dramatically in corn earworms. So we can see the bat's diet strongly tracking or strongly paralleling the um, agricultural insect pests that we know are coming into the area, uh, strongly implicating that the bats are indeed eating large numbers of these insect pests. Here at Love Creek Orchards, Baxter Adams grows apples with the help of some special airborne allies. If we didn't have these bat houses here and, we'd, and we were to get the codling moth, once the codling moth arrives, you've got to spray about every week or 10 days. And that means that you're spraying insecticide poisons around in the orchard virtually once a week during the entire growing season. You're talking about more than 20 times during the year. Not only is that uh, troublesome, it's very, very expensive. And of course, in my view, it's terribly undesirable. And um, I'm really glad we don't have to put up with the codling moth because I, uh, that would really take all the fun out of it for me. To Baxter Adams, Mexican free-tailed bats are worth tens of thousands of dollars. To Texas agriculture, it could be billions. These bats um, are eating half or maybe even three quarters of their body weights in insects each night. And if we go to a place like Bracken Cave right near here, um, where there are 20 million bats, the bats don't weigh very much. They each weigh a half an ounce. But if you take half their body weight and multiply it by 20 million, you come up with like 200 tons of insects every night that are being eaten by these bats. So the potential for their impact on agricultural pests is, is phenomenal. It's, 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 it's amazing. Over a billion dollars each year spent in controlling corn earworms. Damage and control for one of these insect pests, the corn earworm. The bats are eating corn earworms, they're eating tobacco budworms, they're eating fall armyworms, they're eating beet armyworms, they're eating cabbage loopers. How many more insects can I mention to you? It's far closer to a billion than a million. It probably exceeds a billion. But I don't know, really. Billion dollar bats. It's not out of the question. Scientists are still applying advances in technology to help determine a precise figure. But for many people, the value of bats is greater than money. Yeah, we really like bats. We've had them a long time, and we enjoy having them. We always have, and uh, they're good neighbors, and they, they, they do their share of the work around here. Bats just, uh, there's such an enormous diversity of lifestyles and, and sizes and uh, habits that make them fascinating. They could keep, they do keep, in fact, a number of scientists occupied uh, for their lives. And there'll be much more to do after we leave this planet.